Hey folks, this is Rich and you're with Beekeeping with Rich. We got a uh, down and dirty quick video this afternoon because a uh, number of factors came together real well. Last week I was walking the dog. I found this nice cheap aluminum pot in the trash and immediately thought to myself, oh, I'm going to make my new, my new steam extractor out of that. And I threw it in the garage because I didn't have anything to steam extract at this particular moment. And uh, my wife currently is substituting for the lady who does the uh, calls for our club. And a call came in that a woman had done the cutout of a bee nest herself and threw it all in the tub and punched holes in the tub and uh, wanted us somebody to come pick it up. Well, none of our licensed beekeepers are going to try that. So I ran over there and I grabbed it. And much to my astonishment, I think we got a queen. Somehow or other, she managed to not kill the queen. And there must be 8,000 bees and they're all safely ensconced in a hive now. And we're going to see how that works out. But because of the way she did it, there was large masses of comb with brood and such in it that just isn't salvageable. So I've got, before the uh, small high beetles have a chance to attack it, I've got to process it into beeswax. So believe it or not, it didn't take me 15 minutes, probably didn't take me 12 minutes to make this whole rig. Let me show you the way I set this up real quick. Drilled two holes down here at the bottom, took a saber saw, made a cut, bent it down to make the little lip so that the uh, water that condenses from the steam and the uh, wax can just drop to the bottom and flow out here. Just as with my other setup, it'll flow out into a tray over here. This is set up, oh, I can't just leave it all up here because it's not going to heat the table up. Just took a, a medium super to set it on here. Everything will tip forward. Drilled two holes and run a rod through here, which is what I will tie the bag to. Next thing is cut a piece of that piece of shear that we've talked about several other times. Hello, little lady. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you're probably not going to survive this. Uh, so. We're just going to start throwing. Now I shook and brushed most of the bees off of this, but there are just some bees that are so determined you can't get rid of them. So there will be a few casualties here compared to the thousands of casualties from the brood that unfortunately was left laying in a bin overnight. Well, that's pretty much nothing in comparison. So is this a steam extractor or a solar extractor? Oh, this is a steam extractor system. Uh, my solar extractor really isn't set up to do this much wax at one time. And with the amount of moisture in here from uncapped nectar and everything else, this, I mean, if, if this was little enough that I could set all this out in the backyard and let the bees all clean it up first, that would be fine, but I really don't want to do that because I would have to be putting it very close to all the existing hives. We're going into dearth. I don't want to trigger any frenzies. Probably this is going to be a two part video in the sense that uh, we're going to get things going here and then come back in 20 minutes. When we come back in 20 minutes, probably I will direct her to look up through the screen because more than likely there will be two to four hundred bees hanging out on the screen over our heads here trying their best to get into the smell of the honey they're going to be smelling. I don't need a frenzy of robbing going on back in my hives so as much as I'd like to give them this I just don't think it's safe to try. Yeah, I can't 
can't really do that where you can see it. You can come closer. Right through the knot. Got to suspend it. Well, the knot, the knot failed, so we'll just uh, wrap it around here. Now the pot didn't come with a lid and that's one of the reasons I hadn't worked on this thing. It's like, okay, what am I going to do for a lid? Am I going to make a wooden lid to put on here? Am I just going to take a couple of planks? How am I going to do that? Let's see. I think I would like to move this, brace it away. There we go. Okay. I put in a stick to uh, act as a buffer between the steam inlet and the bag. I mean, the heats aren't going to be such as to melt the bag or anything, but I just want to be a little safe there. Better safe than sorry. And now for part two of the story. Just a couple of days ago, my wife said, two pizza stones is too many. Get rid of one of them. Well, guess what? Everything happens when it's supposed to happen for a purpose. <laughs> How do you like that? So all that remains now. Mm -hmm. Oh, say something. Well, I was trying to drag the stream steam extractor out from under a table. I, yes, dear, I put that in there. Okay. Uh, this is the steam fitting that was in the lid of the other steam setup. I just unscrewed it, drilled an appropriately sized hole here, and put it in there. So we'll uh, end this portion of the video here. I want to remind you to like and subscribe because I always say it at the very, very end of the video when there's no time left to do it. So, uh, we're going to stop the video here in just a second. I'm going to fill the steamer up, plug it in, let this whole thing build up ahead of steam. And when things start to melt, we'll come back and uh, show it going on. Because some, for some reason, people like to watch wax melt. So this is Rich. Hey, be sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back. So we can have the excitement of watching wax melt. Please zoom in over here. Nothing quite fast. Yep. Well, there is a certain component of water in this, of course, too, but in case you doubt it, you see, if that was honey, it, of course, would not be making a hard crust on my finger. Yeah. Pretty sure the reason the lady chopped all this stuff out herself was that she wanted to keep all the honey because there was diddly little honey mm. in uh, the stuff she dumped in the tub and turned over to us. But there you go, wax melting. What, what should you do? Should we put a 30 minute video on a loop of this for Christmas or something? <laughs> yeah, no. I don't know. So we'll uh, stop the video now again and come back a little later and uh, we'll keep this going. So this is Rich. You're with Beekeeping with Rich. Hey, like and subscribe. <laughs> See you later. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Hey, everybody. 
we're back again. So it's been about an hour. Um, we haven't even run through half a tank of uh, water in the steamer. Um, looking at it, and I'm not seeing a whole lot of yellow flowing out with the water at the moment. Doesn't mean we're done necessarily. It just means that whatever might be in the core of it needs to be turned to the outside to get more exposed because it's too insulated. But this, you know, there are sheets of it in here that I've just taken out. You know, I flip them out with the stick here. Why this is, well, because, the no, the one in the corner is just a big blob of little bits. And I, don't, I want to show them this before I cover it. Okay. So this is the underside of each one of these sheets. The top side is nice and bright and yellow, but just notice how clean the underside is. Granulated, yes, because that's all this granulation you see here, but these are undersides on all of these, and they're just as clean as can be. Now, if she wants me to take this chunk out, I'll do that. Flip it over so they can see the top. Yeah, you can do that too. The tops are just cleaner and smoother. Is there a second step to this now? Well, I, she wants to know if there's a second step to this. Of course, at some point you're going to put all this back in a clean piece of netting and you're going to process it some more from what this is. Or, I mean, as clean as this is, yeah, I could just go straight into my little mini crock pot and get melted and poured into blocks. But if you want to see a bit of this, okay. But this is all just a little crumble that I pushed to one side because I wanted to see whether or not I was getting any wax anymore. And you can see a little bit of yellow here coming on, but I know from experience that um, not, I could keep doing this for hours and it would just keep acting like this. Whereas if I take it out now, stir everything around and put it back in, it'll go back the way it was. And this will be interesting. So uh, let me turn this off real quick doesn't have a switch you just unplug it put on some heat resistant gloves some silicon take this off scald myself with boiling water I had to put a clamp on here to lift it up because as that big round thing started going like this, it started going to the bottom. So I had made that adjustment a little earlier. Let's see how hot this is. I think I can grab it. Okay. So here's this tray that's ready for it. Steam and heat is coming off of it. So as you can see, there's still plenty probably to be done here, but mostly what you're looking at is the larvae and the slum gum and the dirt. Uh, the larvae, it's a sad thing, but we didn't kill them. They were already dead before we got there. Uh, somebody stacked a bunch of comb horizontally on each other and well, they just don't understand. It got sopped with honey, and unfortunately, I mean, the uh, wax cappings on larvae are permeable. There has to be a gas exchange. The whole thing gets coated with honey. They suff even before they froze to death, they were suffocating probably, so they, they didn't have a chance. But I'm going to let this cool off so that I can turn it around, hand work with it, handle it some. Put it back in there and see if we can get a little bit more out of it. Looks like we've done a pretty good job. If people had chickens, could they receive a larvae for chickens? Absolutely. So that was a question. Uh, my wife just asked that if you had chickens, could you feed this to chickens? 
And the answer is absolutely. I mean, <laughs> cooked grubs? <laughs> cooked larvae? Oh, absolutely. A taste treat. I mean, if, uh, well, I mean, there's people that are right now, there are restaurants in this world where you can buy this as a dish. I'll pass. Yeah, me too. But uh, uh, there are restaurants where you can buy bee, bee larva cooked into presumably fantastic meals. But yeah, I'll pass. Oh yeah, definitely in the apocalypse. I would say definitely, I said maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard stories from uh, some of the outreach beekeepers working in the back mountains of Haiti who say that when kids come crowding around, you think they're crowding around to get the uh, honeycomb, they actually want the comb with larvae in it, and they will munch on that the way other kids would munch on honeycomb because they are very protein deprived and want that protein. Once more into the breach. Once more into the breach, dear friends. Now, where is that clip I took off of there a minute ago? There it is. I think at this point it's easier done just with a clip. There you go. Yep, I can barely touch this, so there we are. And I will plug it back in. If uh, I get any demonstrable amount of wax, I'll take all the rest of that that's out of there now. And if we get any good amount, well, we will do another short segment to let you know that I got some more out of it. I don't know that I'm going to get much out of it, but you know what? I'll keep you up to date because knowledge shared is knowledge gained. So again, stay tuned. This video isn't done yet. Hey everybody. Okay. The uh, afternoon thunder boomers are starting to rumble. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and close this down. It's been 20 minutes since, come on in, dear, since we uh, stirred things up and put it back out. As you can see, we are getting some more wax as a result. And there's liquid wax underneath it that is immediately coating. So, yep, stirring it up does indeed give us more wax. It's not going to be a huge amount more. I'll keep this going, but we're going to wrap the video up now because I think the point's been made. So the steam is a really efficient way ouch, to extract <laughs> <laughs> to extract wax when you've got comb that's full of uh, brood and things like that. You can't mash it. Yeah, I mean, you could boil it, but it's going to make an awful mess. This is such a clean method of doing it compared to any other method that we have out there and it's so efficient and quick comparatively to it's not going to rain on us the next two minutes but it's coming uh, so this is it again second video on steam extraction but i think this one is a whole lot better because we're not down on the ground and this setup I took everything I learned from my mistakes on the first one to improve this one, and it certainly is improving it. So this is Rich. This has been Beekeeping with Wit. Rich, hopefully by now you have liked and subscribed, but if you haven't, shame on you. So <laughs> that's it for today. Have a great weekend, everybody.